today. We're talking to uh, Larry Rayford, and he has some information dealing with uh, the situation of uh, being in, in prison and then coming out and moving into the pulpit. And so, uh, Mr. Rayford, let's start off by uh, having you to give us some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of your life. And then after that, we'll start talking about uh, the topic that brings you to us this morning, and that is from prison to pulpit. Let's do it from that perspective. How you doing, Dr. Haney? I'm actually, I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, well, about myself, I'm a Chicago, born, a Michigan born, Chicago raised young man, man who uh, had a lot of struggles in life. Um, been to, been incarcerated uh, for over half my life. Been in prison for five years, um, you know, and uh, my education, uh, I just got my GED probably, you know, I got my GED two years ago. So, uh, you know, I just took care of my family, took care of my mother, my sister, you know, and then I take care of children. So, um, and since being out, um, I've been in Nashville now for 10 years. And I go to Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church under the tutelage of uh, Bishop elect Marcus Campbell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was ordained last year uh, as, a, as a minister, as associate minister. And it's so many challenges that go with it, uh, especially when you come from, you know, where I come from, which was the streets. And then you go to prison for mistakes and things that we've done. And then you come out with try to change your life. People still look at you as the same person that went in. So it's really hard sometimes when you when you come out and try to do something different. But I always think about uh, Paul, you know, who was once Saul. And when he was Saul, he did a lot of nonsense. He persecuted, he killed. Christians, he killed people, you know, and um, but Jesus knew it was something in that man. So when he met him, you know, he uh, he blinded him. And Paul said, Jesus, if you give my sight back, I'll follow you. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, Paul followed him. And it's so funny that people know about the stories and they know about what happened in the word. And they say they believe in the word. But when it comes to being in the natural and not the spiritual, uh, they take your spiritual, they take your spiritual realm for granted, mm -hmm. and I think it really hurts a lot of us that are coming from prison and stepping into our calling and being called because we were convicted. Mm -hmm. So with that call comes conviction. Uh, with that call comes criticism mm -hmm. as well. But with that call also comes a recognition that you have been uh, what all uh, institutions are supposed to produce, a rehabilitated individual, even yes, though uh, we, uh, I think that you more than anybody else uh, understand what it means when they talk about rehabilitation yes, yes, in yes. there. And when you get back out here, nobody believes that you've that been, you've what, been rehabilitated. rehabilitated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I, yeah. So let's 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 sort of follow that uh, line in terms of uh, moving in a real sense from prison to pulpit. I think you've already indicated that you've been incarcerated, yes, and et cetera. Sir. But now what was the transition that allowed you to uh, move from uh, coming out of uh, a closed society in a real sense uh, to uh, uh, meet your Damascus road in terms, since you've talked about Paul, uh, what, what was your Damascus road? Wow, uh, I've been shot six times. I've been stabbed 12. Um, I had open heart surgery. Um, my biggest thing with my children, and it's crazy because everything that I went through still didn't stop me from doing that dumb stuff I was doing. But I had children and I had to realize that I didn't want my children to be raised by the propaganda. I didn't want my children to be raised by the nonsense or the ignorance of the world or, or other people, period. I wanted to be a father to my children. And the only way I could do that was I had to be here. Yeah. And I will learn something, once your mind is free, then you're able to do other things. The Bible says, um, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed in a renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you change your mind, you change your grind. Mm -hmm. And that was my whole plight right there. It just wanted to do something different for my children and other children mm -hmm. and children's children. Cause I realized the people I hurt, mm -hmm. the people I've done wrong, people I've done things to, and I felt like I owed them. And if I couldn't go back and give lives back or go back and uh, uh, give people that time back, then what I could do is serve, serve as much as I can, serve as much as I can in terms of doing better to help somebody else. 
And so that was in a real sense of passion with you that yes, you sir. wanted to go out and in spite of what others might say in terms of, or in spite of the doubts yeah. that people might have had in reference to your sincerity and et cetera, you kept on pushing anyway because there was some kind of passion that kept, that, that drove you. Is that yes, what you're sir. telling us? Very much so. It's the passion. You know, it's, it's thinking about the movie Passion of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's just the passion, man. It, I mean, Christ had a passion for people, you know, regardless, his, his purpose in the passion, his passion in his purpose. It was just, he had a passion for people, you know? And the thing is, I have a passion for people. I have a passion for our children, especially our youth, you know? But I have a passion for people, period, mm -hmm. all around. I wanna see, I wanna see my brothers get along. I wanna see my sisters get along. I wanna see love happen. I wanna see brothers and sisters loving each other. You know, this is something that I wanna see, even though I know it's hard, but when I do see it, I smile. When I see an older couple that's been together for 40, 50 years, I'm, I'm happy about that because that, 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 that makes me feel as though me and my rib will make it that long. You know, that gives us a sense of it can happen, even though you see all these divorces happen, you know. So yeah, it's the passion for people because I wanna see good things happen. I'm tired of seeing the nonsense. I just wanna see God's promise. I wanna know when I leave here that God has said, well done, that faith, good and faithful servant. And I, that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm looking forward and, to. And, and so you, you came up, you have this idea of going what from, you talk often of from what? From prison, prison. To, to pull the yeah. worst situation that you could possibly find mm -hmm. uh, in a closed society, et cetera, uh, now moving into a, a situation where you not only uh, are free, but you have, in a real sense, real wings because you're now under the uh, wings of Jesus Christ. Is that uh, uh, under some kind of spiritual wings? Is that That's what you're it. saying? Now, and I'm so happy you said that, Dr. Haney. One thing when I say that, it's not that uh, we're going, well, we're just getting out of bondage, okay? But at the end of the day, it's still almost like being in prison. Why? Because you're serving people that are there. Sometimes they might persecute you. And sometimes we look at when we get out of a situation or we came out the world, that when we get into the word, that we won't be persecuted anymore or we won't be uh, criticized or we won't be judged. That's when it really happens. You know, that's when it really happens is once we step into the pulpit or once not even just being a uh, step in the pulpit, just in the mindset of, Christ, mindset of Christ. Once we become a Christian, we become a new creature. We get criticized. We get persecuted. And now we have to understand those challenges come. That's what I mean by it don't have to just be the prison of the pulpit. It can be from the prison to the pew. At the end of the day, you have to realize that as a Christian, you're going to get criticized. And if you're not getting criticized, you're not getting persecuted, then maybe you're not doing something right. So that's what I'm learning in this walk. So when we talk about from the prison to the pulpit, that's just my plight. But there's other people that went from prison to the pew and they're wondering every day, why am I still going through, through this mess? Why are people still hating me? Why is people still hating on me? Why people think I'm, I'm that backstabber, that liar that I'm not anymore? Why am I still fighting this fight? It's because at the end of the day, Jesus fought the same fight for us. And we tend to think that since Jesus did it, we don't have to. Okay, and, and so Mr. Rayford, uh, can you, in a real sense, think in terms of leaving a message to young people who might be involved in whatever kind of situation and who might be incarcerated coming out? What are some of the words of encouragement? We've got about a minute and a half. What are some of the words of encouragement that you can leave with them? Because it would appear to me that they need encouragement. If you go to the court system, you see what's going on, et cetera. Uh, they don't have any kind of encouragement down there. And so what can you say, uh, being a person who has been incarcerated, now liberated, and et cetera, speak to that for the next minute and a half. Okay. Um, I would like to say, allow your discouragement to be your encouragement. Things that discourage you, allow that to encourage you to do better. Things that were meant to break you down, allow that to lift you up. You might say how. Well, you know what I've learned? Why worry when you can worship? Instead of worrying about things, worship God and see that it works for you. I promise you it'll work for you. I know because I've tried it. I'm trying it. I'm trying it even daily, day in, day out. Don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm, I'm in a position now that I am doing a lot better. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't get any easier, mm -hmm. but it gets better. It's much better. I'm not looking over my shoulder anymore. I'm not, I'm not running anymore. I'm not fighting anymore. You know, God is fighting my battles for me. And that, that, if I can't give you any uh, other uh, words of encouragement, that's it. Just be blessed, be encouraged, be inspired, and be motivated daily. And, 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 and you think that those are words that come from the lips 
of a man who's been there, been there. and now has had an experience. And, 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 and in spite of everything, this is uh, it's a, a terrific experience. And let me thank you for bringing that information. Uh, let me encourage our me. audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments. Thank you and good morning.